Okay, Abusia, you have a map of Bastion, so at the Bapi OG media, so you have a map of political highway, so highway there. And some people also are young, so you have Japan, you have a map of your phone, and who dear Echo, and a dear Airban Abusia, and then Echo, so our political highway, so a lawyer can say, I have a suit, see Kata, Eddie, and send me a barber to the about Supreme Court ruling. Or the nano ababe to sa and semina air cost the banter between the Supreme Court and Chief Justice. And what the kind of ensem be bre a barbe to the bet without the bet to jano or chase sa Supreme Court no only jurisdiction via a war a year parliament. So I just say sa an attempt na ni or make his ni ruling no ni ruling ni dear a e, e, bogus a e, wun here say and kawaye den or yes a asama odi tu jane say the supreme court failed to apply its own rules of court abusia in tine sama or chene dear or say a e, supreme court no wa fili on one ni move na oye ni nye move and ke ni kwa yes oye den oye na abam bag den dear di abam bag den dear no ni kwa yes oye den oye den oye in tine on or chene say abam bag den no or support the Abam Bagben 100% and Supreme Court no <laughs> Supreme Court no and now say it is Chief Justice no or no any organs no it is on per se a mechanism bet on no case no say Supreme Court no wa feel so any ruling no a win here a bogus na Parliament no Parliament no or no one would even be a or a Abam Bagben into this arbitrary media or the Ama Abam Bagben I was a Abam Bagben on can na kuma and to me mabusia we ne and sma e koso e wo hai we ne so ye bari abi jafo ase so mo jepe ne koko ti sa audio we e de mai aha e p o g ni di aso me da ma se considering a matter regarding the pnc and in which the pnc had a critical interest that that was not the issue before the court this court was dealing with a matter which had been brought by the then majority leader uh, in parliament uh, or, you know, in order to get the court to reverse something that the speaker had done. So, I mean, you know, those analogies were completely uh, irrelevant, but, but more substantially, and I think these are some of the worrying signals. Um, when you look at the ruling that the court gave, I mean, certain obvious and critical factors were simply left out of the equation. You quoted uh, the passage in which the Chief Justice talked about Article 99 of the um, Constitution, which gives the High Court uh, powers in respect of the invalidation of a parliamentary election or the determination of the vacancy of the seat of an elected member of parliament. The reality is that that Article 99 has been interpreted by the Supreme Court in previous decisions, and it's been interpreted to mean that it is the High Court that has the exclusive jurisdiction. There are any number of uh, cases that have determined that, including, by the way, um, the, 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 the Sal matter, the, you know, in, in respect of Sal, which we talked about quite a bit last uh, time, the, 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 the Supreme Court determined that the High Court had exclusive jurisdiction, and the Chief Justice, at that time a Justice of the Supreme Court, was a part of that panel. In fact, when the matter went on review, she wrote the decision uh, of, the, of the Supreme Court and very clearly laid out in, you know, elaborate language, Article 99 gives the High Court exclusive jurisdiction. So that's not a matter for the Supreme Court, or indeed, that's not even a matter for the High Court exercising its powers in respect of fundamental human rights. So these decisions are there. there. There's more of them. I don't, I mean, I'm not giving a lecture to a law class, so I'm not going to go through those uh, uh, cases. But those cases are well known. So if the court constituted, you know, recently wanted to depart from those judicial precedents, 
Article 1293 of the Constitution makes it quite clear that they have got to give us reasons why those decisions that they have given previously are to be departed from. And indeed, we didn't I, I, hear I, anything. I, I, I will come to you, Council. Uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, these are just your preliminary comments, just so you can continue. But essentially, what you're saying, and indeed the Chief Justice, when she was reading her ruling, as it were, mentioned that precedent of 2021 and even 2024. And so, and still so used that to justify her, her decision. And I'll come back to you. I just want to, uh, I, I just want Frank Davis to also give us his understanding of what happened. And I saw you kind of shaking your head when uh, Mr. Chikata was submitting his point, uh, the, the CJ, saying that, and the argument of the speaker was that I have not been served because per the law, I'm supposed to be served on Mondays. And the CJ during her ruling said that, yes, you're supposed to be served on Mondays, but also the law permits us to serve the legal department of parliament any other day. Yes. And that was what she, she, she used to, to, to defend her stance. You've just heard the argument of uh, Frank Davis here, as well as the counter argument from George Law. I wonder where you stand on it. Our submissions. I believe that the issue should not be looked at primarily from the point of view of, of um, the circular that the Chief Justice referred to. And by the way, the Chief Justice took it upon herself to make reference to some earlier circular of um, his, her predecessor in India, which was not before the court. It was not part of uh, what was before the court. I think that it is really um, the Constitution that we ought to look at when we are determining these issues of service on the Speaker and the clerk. And it's quite clear in Article 117 that civil or criminal process coming from any court or place out of Parliament shall not be served on or executed in relation to the Speaker or a member of or a member of the clerk to parliament while he's on his way to attending at or returning from any proceedings of parliament. So the constitution itself makes clear provision. And I believe that part of the reason that the circular was um, issued had to do with some discussions between the chief justice and the speaker as to how this provision in the Constitution should be implemented. But, you know, I am more concerned with what I believe are fundamental problems with the ruling that was delivered by the Supreme Court. And I, I don't think that um, Mr. Davis has persuaded me that we are, not, we are not allowed to comment on rulings that have been given because the judgment itself is going to be given um, on the 11th of, of, um, of, of November. Of November. I mean, a, a ruling has been delivered, and there are fundamental problems with it. I started off talking about, you know, the Article 99 reference, which you quoted from, um, you know, in opening. And there's, there are a number of other points. You know, one of the issues that was put before the Supreme Court um, on behalf of the speaker, was that even the statement of case which was put before the Supreme Court in respect of the application, the originating process, it was not compliant with Rule 46.2 of the Supreme Court rules. And that rule simply says that there's going to be verification by an affidavit of whatever the plaintiff is bringing before the court. There was no such affidavit. And again, this was not in dispute because the plaintiff, in seeking to oppose uh, Mr. Sorry's argument, did not dispute that there was no affidavit. We didn't hear any response to that failure um, to provide an important element in the statement of case, uh, an important element in the 
process. Now, the reason why that's important is because it, the rule of the court, of the rules of the Supreme Court, have a very clear in Rule 29. Well, then the rules of court. Mm. Your line. So, Obama fell proceeds unless the compliance is made by the court. Nothing in the ruling indicates that. Nothing, nothing, nothing in the in the ruling indicated the Supreme Court had waived. And, and, and you're breaking, you're, you're breaking a bit. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chikata, you're breaking a bit. But I just want to. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry, Mr. Chikata, you're breaking a bit. You're breaking a bit. We can't hear you clearly. But I, I want to understand, really, in the nutshell, what you're saying. You, 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 you made a point earlier that you have fundamental problems with uh, this whole ruling. Uh, and I just wanted to find out from you, aside from the procedural one, what exactly is, is that fundamental issue you have? Because I, I quoted earlier uh, when I was, uh, or Mr. Lowe was on the floor, that the Chief Justice said that procedure cannot override legality. So I just want to understand really uh, if that is the point you want to make, disagreeing with the CJ. Okay, uh, so we'll have to uh, reconnect to Chachichi Kata. The line is not helping us today, uh, but uh, Kata is back on the line, so we can go to him now for his thoughts. I know you didn't conclude on your thought, but before you do so, though, listening to your argument before the line uh, broke, is it fair to say that the Supreme Court of Ghana is perhaps using, uh, as it were, constitutional interpretation as a cover to assume uh, complete jurisdiction or total authority when it comes to this area? Let me express it in my own words. I am indicating that in that ruling, the Supreme Court failed to apply its own rules of court. And I mentioned Rule 46.2, which requires that when a plaintiff is coming before the Supreme Court with a certain matter in relation to seeking interpretation, seeking enforcement, the, that plaintiff must have a statement of case and the facts and particulars that the plaintiff is relying on should be verified by an affidavit upon which the plaintiff is relying. There was no affidavit. The plaintiff admitted that in response to Mr. Sorry's application. The Supreme Court's ruling does not tell us why the Supreme Court failed to apply its own rules of court. Especially when there's a Rule 79 which says that non-compliance shall be a bar to further proceedings unless that non-compliance has been waived. And there was no indication that there had been a waiver. There are other fundamental issues. You know, in this plaintiff's writ, the article that the plaintiff was seeking an interpretation of was Article 971G. 971G. No, no. The, if you look at the writ, they did not include H. And that's a fact. They did not include H. So why was um, the issue of Mr. Honorable Esiama even before the Supreme Court at all? Because H was not a matter that had been brought by the plaintiff. Not only that, the plaintiff did not include the the uh, NDC uh, member for Amenfi Central in the people in respect of whom he was seeking certain orders of the Supreme Court. Yet the Supreme Court at the end had that member also included in its orders. So the Supreme Court in that sense is acting outside the framework of its own rules, outside the framework of the writ that was put before it. And that, I would like to say, is the reason why a former Chief Justice of the land can make the kind of comments that have been made that, you know, it's predictable. It's almost like when it's, and it's not only her, by the way, I mean, you had a former 
uh, or oh, the Minister for National Security also talk about Supreme Court decisions always tending to go one way. In other words, the issue of the partisanship with which adjudication is going on. So if I get you correctly, what, what you're saying is that the last week's ruling kind of intensifies the perception that the courts are becoming more political than legal. That's what you're saying. Abs well, I mean, absolutely. But as I say, I like to say it in my own words. And my words are to the effect that observers who are not, you know, members of the opposition to the government and observe. Mr. Chikata just uh, froze again, but we'll come back to him, wrap up with his thoughts and get the final word of Frank Davis as well as uh, George Law. You're still here on Agenda on TV3. When we come back, make the decision she eventually, uh, or take the decision she eventually took, which was that those respective constituencies were going to suffer going into this year's general election because with just a little over a month, there will be no opportunity for a by-election. Don't go away. Stay with us of anybody does not justify a Supreme Court not complying with its own rules when hearing a case, particularly when it does not give a chance to the defendants to appear for their side to be heard. The Supreme Court gave a ruling, as we call it, ex parte, without hearing the speaker. And the, the, the Supreme Court had every opportunity to hear the speaker. The Supreme Court chose not to hear. And, and you know, there are further problems with the decision of the Supreme Court. The application that was before the court was made ex parte, even though earlier on, they had filed a motion on notice for the injunction order. Now, I mean, Mr. Mr. Davis, I'm sure will recall, he, in a similar situation in respect of uh, Honorable Jachi Kweisi, tried to get the Supreme Court ex parte to give certain orders without hearing Judge Kweisi. And the first question he was asked as soon as he got up in the court is, are you expecting us to make these orders without hearing, you know? I just happened to be in court that day, you know, we were not uh, served. I was not there as a representative or as counsel for Judge Kweisi. But the Supreme Court itself found it appropriate that an order should be made for Honorable Yashiko is to be served before they would continue the hearing in respect of that matter. In this particular matter, the Supreme Court proceeded at breakneck speed with an application that was filed after midday on Friday. The Supreme Court doesn't normally sit on Fridays. Somehow the Chief Justice, you know, who is not all powerful, by the way, let's not, you know, when we talk about the, the Supreme Court, uh, having power to interpret and enforce and so on. It doesn't make them all powerful or infallible. The Supreme Court decided that on this occasion, without hearing the speaker or giving the opportunity to the speaker to be heard, they would proceed ex parte with certain, with certain orders. So for you, that was double standard? Well, I mean, reasons why that is just not acceptable. But let me make a final point as far as, you know, the, 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 the failures of, of uh, the Supreme Court in its ruling are concerned. You know, the Supreme Court was faced with a so-called application to stay execution of the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament. Now, an application for stay of execution, as is fairly elementary within uh, legal procedures, relates to execution of court decisions or court orders. The speaker does not fall within the judicial hierarchy. And so that application itself was completely strange. I mean, let somebody and, you know, let any judge or lawyer point me to where in any of the constitutional provisions, rules of court, Courts Act and so on, where the Supreme Court or any other court is given power to stay execution of a ruling of the Speaker of Parliament. And on this point, no mm, I, I want to come to Mr. Davis, but I want to come to you with a quote 
from the, the father of the president in 1968. In that case, between a Republic versus Liberty Press Limited mm -hmm. and others, 1968 mm -hmm. exactly, where Mr. Edward Akofuado, then I believe CJ, because eventually he became ceremonial president, said that the judiciary, and I'm quoting, like any other democratic institution, must justify its continued existence. This implies that its actions and conduct must be subject to the same measure of public scrutiny as any other governmental institution. I'm sure you heard, Mr. Chico made a point similar to uh, this point. Do you feel that we are deviating from this in 2024? We are not deviating from anything, uh, Beatrice. Mm -hmm. After the ruling, there has been a lot of critique. And that is exactly what we, we, we are also being called upon to do here. So nothing has deviated from what Akufado CJ Akufado said. Nobody has. There have been a plethora of discussions on all radio stations, television stations, talking about this ruling. And that is what we are doing. Fundamentally, we are expressing ourselves the rights that we have as Ghanaians. I, 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 taking his break. Okay, Abu Sinawene and Sama Ekoso, our political highway. So, a year your lawyer, Sasu Sikata, or no, and a Desa and Semino, a better two judge, I say. Well, or rubbish is Supreme Court ruling now. I just say, or share a uh, year uh, back then. We say, on celebrated victory now. On one, I want to say, everybody, I'll be your force. I say, I'm a chip in the cocoa tea. I'll do we at the MI. Aha, AP, OG, yeah, so, yeah, I'm a say.